What's going on, ladies and gents? It's your boy Dars. We're back with some more Queen's Blade Limit Break video content. And in this one, we're going to finally get to the overview of the brand new Ultra Rare Warrior. It's the first physical attribute Ultra Rare Warrior, Luna Luna, the Blossom Dancer. Now, she probably looks familiar because, well, she's Luna Luna, right? In the physical attribute, there is a lesser version of her right here, okay? She looks pretty similar to some degree uh, very basic not as skilled so basically what they ended up doing they took her they roided her up gave her big girl boobies and what can only be described as I, I daddy issues we'll, we'll just say, <laughs> we'll say some some daddy issues I, I don't I don't know anyways Luna Luna let's start off with how she looks they did a great job of upgrading her look I like the overall outfit, I, I, something about it just strikes me wrong. It's one of my least favorite looks of any warrior, and maybe because it challenges my dominance in the bedroom with the member of my preferred sex. Uh, that's all I can say there, if you know what I'm saying. Her, God damn it. Her spicy pose is actually better but only because she is she's got the flexibility that every man dreams her woman has right just not much more i can say about that without getting dinged by youtube she's reaching out for her light oh it's fading oh no no anyways uh still something about it just challenges me or makes me uncomfortable in ways that i'm not sure i like or dislike <laughs> it's um I, I really, yeah, I, I can't really say too much more about it. What do you guys think of the spicy pose? What do you guys think of her uh, roided up look? I do like the attachments of the nipples. I, I'm not saying that this wouldn't be a great bedroom outfit for uh, any of my, any number of my lady friends. Anyways, don't know why I got out of that. Let's jump right into it. We got quite a bit actually to go over here. So she's a mage of the physical attribute. Burn, damage resisting, growth, I'm not sure that uh, you'll see what I mean by all of this, but I'm not sure that I agree with it. Her passive, she gets a 50% increase to attack. That's added to her. Additive, 30% increase to HP that's added to her. Continuous damage, she has a self-continuous damage increase of 20%. Basically, burn damage. We'll take that as an example because that's what she does. Burn damage generally lasts for a few turns, does X amount of damage uh, based on X per turn. That's continuous damage. So burn is a continuous damage. She's increasing her burn damage by 20%. So let's just to clarify, this is not additive. If you do 20% of your attack in burn damage, you don't add 20% to that for a total of 40. It's increasing that 20 by 20%. So it's not getting too far out of hand. Although I think this in this day and age, they could actually go with that because mages still continue to be on the low end of the totem pole when it comes to overall pressure damage so how does she stack up well let's start with uh turn one ability two turn cooldown right she deals 65 percent magic damage two times to all enemies okay for a total of 130 percent it's not a lot however she has a 70 percent chance at max rank to inflict a burn twice to the to the enemy so she's getting two burns out uh, burn does uh, HP damage or loses HP equal to 20% of uh, the attack. So keep in mind she gets that increase. Her turn two ability with a four turn cooldown, however, deals 40% magic damage. Ew! Wait, she hits four times. Okay, 80% chance to inflict burn each time to all enemies. So she's going to hit four times. Still not great damage. However, that last hit. Deals additional damage equal to 10% of your attack times the accumulated amount of burn stacks. But they're capping it at 6 burn stacks. So I think this is a huge missed opportunity to really showcase an ultra rare warrior's ability. We'll go over that at the end when I'm done going over the skills because I want to talk about some glaring issues here. But just to put this in perspective, that last hit okay, takes... 10% of your attacks, let's say a million is pretty standard after you've been playing for a few months, right? 10% is 100,000. Times 6, you're going to get a 600,000 attack. Now keep in mind, this is an attack, okay? Meaning that it's 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 actually benefits from crit and crit damage and damage increases from other sources. So because this is part of her 
uh, direct attack. Not saying that 10% of your attack times 6 is equal to 40% of your overall attack, I'm just saying it's actually fairly decent damage, okay? Uh, but anyways, it is what it is. Now, let's see, okay, here. Battle, when the battle starts, she triggers Inferno. Now, Inferno was a little bit confusing to some people because of the wording that they have here. During own turn, any beautiful warrior in the field has X. Well, I'm gonna stop right there. Inferno is in battle aura, but it is a enemy battle aura. So, at the start of battle, she triggers Inferno. You're gonna see this icon right here on every enemy on the field. What this does, though, is it not any beautiful warrior, okay? I'm gonna reword this. Any ally warrior on the field has a 60% chance to deal 3% max HP burn to three random enemies, right? Cannot exceed 30% of your own attack. So, what she's doing is she's debuffing the enemy with a battle aura that can't be removed, right? At least not that I can... No, I've ever seen. Um, she's giving all your allies the ability to trigger a HP attack to three random enemies. It says a 60% chance. Now this happens on during a ally's normal turn, okay? It does not trigger on follow-up attack that I have ever seen. It does not trigger on uh, barrage. It does not trigger on anything but a normal attack or a direct attack skill attack. So it has to be part of a normal attack. So think of it this way. Anytime an ally takes a turn, okay? Because you're gonna be doing something. It's either gonna be a normal or a skill attack or something. Anytime an ally takes a turn, you have a 60% chance to deal. Think of it as an extra attack before you even do your normal attack or whatever it is you're doing, right? It's an extra attack. Worthy of 3% of max HP, capping at 30% of your own attack, which is fairly decent all in all. Now, damage inflicted by this is considered burn damage, though. <clears throat> Don't like that. However, it does play into her other skill, and I want to talk about that when we get that. So Inferno, however, so when it triggers 30 times, though, it will ascend the battle aura to Purgatory, basically increasing the chance of your allies to do 80, uh, to 80% of dealing 5% of a max HP damage to 5 uh, random enemies, and then increasing it to 50% of your own attack, which is fairly decent. However, I'm going to come back to this. Now, the effect can only tr uh, only trigger uh, while the user is on the field and can be triggered up to 6 times per turn. That is the confusing part. Because, from what I've seen, it does not trigger on follow-up attacks. It does not trigger on barrage. With which is a little weird so it's either not working as intended or i am not seeing it work as intended meaning that getting to 30 times to trigger uh inferno to purgatory actually takes a long time anyways i hope they fix that so that's just inferno now her ultra rare skill when an enemy takes burn damage deal damage equal to three percent of the missing hp as physical attribute damage keep in mind it's a physical warrior so they're introducing physical attribute damage and damage resistances in the form of just having her on the team and in your roster one time okay damage cannot exceed 10 percent of your attack which you look at this and go well, that's crappy. That's that's kind of low. It really is low. However, it can trigger up to five times on each enemy per turn. Thus, kind of balancing out while not making it over P. So, basically, a couple of things are happening here. When an enemy takes burn damage, you're going to deal 3% of the missing HP. This actually triggers on Inferno. So, when an ally takes her turn and she triggers the 60 or 80%, a... HP burn, keep in mind that this damage is considered burn damage. So anytime your ally takes an Inferno extra attack, you actually are triggering this physical attribute damage. Okay. Also, I, it took me a while to figure this out because this triggers up to five times on each enemy turn because I wasn't seeing it. I, I recorded it, played it back several times, and I was not seeing it. So burn damage generally triggers and resolves at the end of the turn. At the end of the turn, all the burn damage hits, right? Well, I finally seen it happen 
that when the burn damage resolved at the end of the turn, it triggered this up to five times. You only get one animation, but it was in fact triggering it. I originally thought that it wasn't triggering on the burn damage at the end of the turn. So what this is saying is that not only when you couple this with the inferno chance and the burn resolve damage at the end, you're actually doing quite a bit of physical attribute damage. Yes and no. Keep in mind it's capped at 10% of your own attack. So what I'm going to say is <clears throat> there's a few things I don't like here. One, the final damage resist for two turns. Keep in mind, mages can do can function as support characters. They can buff the enemy team, they can debuff the enemy team, or they can provide buffs and uh, to allies. Final damage resist, I don't understand this one. What they could have done is done like they did with uh, Pied Piper of a physical attribute. They increase in continuous damage for all allies, not just self. Guys, this is an ultra rare warrior. Huge missed opportunity on the part of G123. Turn one ability, fine, I like it. You can trigger uh, up to two burn stacks. This ability here, I do not necessarily like. I would like to see the burn stacks increased to 12, 10 to 12. That would actually make that final hit because you're capping at 10% of attack times the number of burns, you're capping it at six. That final hit, even for a mage, needs to be higher. 12, I think 12 is not unreasonable, but 10 is definitely the minimum baseline. Inferno, great. However, I would like to see this chance increase to 70% and 90% respectively. At 60% chance, I'm even though it triggers every time an ally takes a turn or has a chance to trigger and can actually ramp up, I think this needs to be 70. And I think that triggering this 30 times is a bit of a stretch for a 15 turn fight because you have to use the right team comp in order, well, not even the right team comp. Again, it does not trigger on follow-up attacks, follow attacks that I see. However, if it triggered on follow-up attacks, it would actually make this warrior more, way more valuable and 30 times would be great. But because it doesn't, this 30 needs to be reduced. I'm gonna say, <clears throat> 50, I'm gonna say 20, okay, before it triggers purgatory and becomes even more deadly. The ultra rare ability here I think is great. It's, it's fine where it is. The problem is, is it's not really taking advantage of physical and damage and attribute, uh, physical attribute damage and damage resist actually kick in. Remember, every time you get an ultra rare warrior or sacred treasure, they are providing attribute damage bonuses and buffs. This does not benefit from the physical attribute damage bonus because it's capped at 10% of your attack but it triggers five times. Now keep in mind, if I'm not mistaken, it actually is subject to physical attribute damage resistance, which makes this a bit of a play back and forth. You're gonna have to have the physical attribute damage buff and to counter the damage resistance that you're actually gonna get from here in order to take full advantage of the 10% of your own attack. I don't think that's gonna be a problem because 10% is really, really low they could actually increase this to 25, and I think she'd be all around a better warrior. In PvP, here's the, here's the end result, guys. PvP, she is definitely, has she had potential to be a great PvP pressure cooker. With the limitations and the way that she's programmed now, she is not worthy of the UR title, in my opinion. If they make those changes, she would definitely, and increase, the actual damage uh, to be worthy of a UR warrior, she would definitely be a PvP contender. She can be valuable in PvP. Now, the way it stands now, definitely not changing any of my team to put her on there. Not even my B or C team. I, I could see where I at 11 to 12 star I could put her on my C team, but definitely not my A or B team. That's extremely disappointing testing her out on boss damage because of her final hit here and the fact that she grants her allies the ability to take basically an extra turn that does max HP damage and max HP damage is where it's at on long-term boss fights guys she really at least at nine at least at 10 star she is not performing the way that I thought that she could in terms of damage. Not that she didn't provide buffs to my allies, like I said, 
but if this triggered on follow-up attacks, I could see her being a mainstay and reducing this 30 to 20. She could definitely be part of my one of my main boss damage teams. Definitely, especially on event bosses where you have two teams. Her UR skill is right where it's at, except for the fact that, actually it's not, they need to increase this to 20 to 25% of her attack to compensate for the back and forth on attribute damage and damage resist. All in all, I'm actually disappointed, meaning that I'm going to give her a C. C plus maybe at max rank where you can take advantage of these abilities here at their full potential. That's just me, guys. I like her on par with Snow White, and they are my two least favorite Ultra Rare Warriors so far. I give them both Cs. If you're going to pull for her, definitely I would not go all out. What I'm doing is I'm definitely taking her to 10, actually probably 11, uh, on the first run because of using diamonds and things like that. But go into the trial battle here, guys, and get used to how she functions in battle when it comes to uh, applying the burn debuffs, hitting that hit, and uh, getting used to the battle auras as they actually work. I hope G123 actually makes an update to this warrior, but she was actually extremely disappointing in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions you have or any information that I actually have incorrect, because keep in mind, I've spent time with the warrior, but I could have it wrong, and she could not be functioning as intended. They tend to make updates sometimes several days after release. So, that being said, that's the review, guys. Let me know what you thought. See you at the next one.